Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill, and today we're going to do one of my favorite games on the channel. It's back for another month. That is the box office high low game and to recap last month real quick if you didn't see that video last month we <laughs> we didn't really get off to a great schedule i mean at least i didn't you did a little bit better i went two of six with my high lows you know the month of june was a weird month at the box office i said indy would go lower and ruby gilman would go lower as well those still haven't come out at the time of recording this but matt on the other hand you went five of three you also said indy would go lower but ruby gilman would go higher so you had the potential to possibly get seven out of ten right for the month of june very possible i i think the biggest surprise that we had this month was actually two biggest surprises the flash massively underperforming mm -hmm. which honestly we should have gone with our guts because my gut was definitely telling me there's no way no way that makes that much money and spider-verse i know i kept thinking that seems low for a movie that is so beloved people just loved the first movie and yeah it didn't make a lot of money at the box office but it found its audience afterwards so we definitely kind of both took l's on on those you know the month of june wasn't the best time at the box office but maybe july can be a little bit better who knows let's kick it off with the first weekend of july which sees two releases and let's do the one that you know i think is a little bit more fun and that's joyride right now the official box office tracking has it for between 12 and 17 million dollars so that puts our line at 14.5 which funny enough is basically what no hard feelings to this past weekend well that's the line that i'm looking at no hard feelings did like 14.5 15 million with a major star in the lead if jennifer lawrence can't bring a r-rated comedy all the way to beyond 15 million there's no fucking way joyride can so if our midline here where we're going over under is 14.5 million i'm going under there's no way this outgrosses a jennifer lawrence vehicle see i think it will outgross in the long run but i do agree that its opening weekend will be a little bit lower everything i've heard about this movie from when it showed out a festival to like critic reviews is this is hilarious it's gonna have great word of mouth However, I like you said, they don't have a Jennifer Lawrence in the movie, so I don't know how that would work for opening weekend. So I could see this opening on that lower end of projections, like the 10 to 12, maybe up to 13, but it will have some great legs. Like it could have like a sub 50 hold in week two and just stay around for like the whole month of July and collect a lot of money. So we're both going lower of joy rides. So let's switch over to the horror side. We have Insidious the Red Door. They're back with another one. The projections say 25 to 35, so that puts our line firmly at $30 million. I'm gonna just say off the bat, my gut feeling here is this is gonna have pretty toxic word of mouth. I don't think it's gonna do very well on opening weekend. I don't think it's gonna do very well afterwards. I'm gonna say lower. The last one came out in January and funny enough put up $30 million in its opening weekend. So I don't really know because the last one had awful word of mouth too. And horror has been a really weird genre as of late. It either severely overperforms or it just shits the bed and does nothing. And that's kind of like what Boogeyman did last month. So I'm going to say Insidious is probably going to be a little bit under. I know they're kind of promoting this as the final chapter, but still, I just feel like I haven't heard buzz for this movie. Like, I feel like I've only seen the trailer like one or two times. It's been in like the last week, and I don't really feel like there's any online presence for this. So I'm going to go under just slightly, though. That's the thing. Like, Boogeyman, I saw more ads for it than this. I think the only thing this has going for it is Insidious. Also... How many times now have we had something say it's the final chapter and, and then they release like four more movies afterwards? Yeah, it's I mean, constant. I remember I remember a few years ago it was Saw, the final chapter, and then we had the Chris Rock one, and then we have Saw X coming this year. So that will be something that we'll do in October. But for the Ridiculous. week of July 12th, we have one of the most anticipated movies of this whole month, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. This one, though, has a caveat. It comes out on a Wednesday. So it's opening weekend is actually days three, four, and five for its total. Right now, the line, I guess, would be 65 to 80. That's what they're projecting right now. Far From Home did the same thing back a few years ago. It opened to $92.5 million, but 
Mission Impossible Tom Cruise, he's a cool guy, but he's not Spider-Man. So I don't think it's going to get up to that high, but I, I think it could open a little bit higher. So I'm going to go with, mm, if our line is 72.5, I'm going to say this could... I think this could get up to 80. I definitely think it can get up to 80. I'm going to say over as well. Tom Cruise has goodwill with audiences right now because of Top Gun Maverick. That is just a given. People who have not been going to the theater, they are going to go see this because Tom Cruise did them right last year. I'm predicting a pretty shitty month in the box office, but I think this is the one thing that's going to be a massive massive success the one thing that could hurt this movie is that it does have a longer runtime it's nearly three hours so you can't pack as many showings in as you could do with top gun maverick because i mean even though it's only like a 20 30 minute difference that's still the difference of a whole extra show time over the course of the day but still like you mentioned tom cruise he won a lot of people over last year they're going to come back and see what big stunts he has to pull off this year the week of july 21st we have two just big in your face movies that everyone wants to talk about and everyone is putting against each other that is Barbie, that is Oppenheimer. Which one do you want to start off with here? Oh, well, let's start with Barbie, I suppose. I think Barbie is a good place to start here. This one is going to be a very interesting. There's a lot of online hype for this, but I don't know how that's going to translate into actual audience reactions. See, I, I'm with you originally. I got burned by Spider-Verse last month saying the same thing. Like, oh, it's it's got a lot of hype online. Is that going to translate to opening weekend? And I was wrong. So I'm going to course correct that this time with barbie and say it's going to go over these projections have been going up and up each and every week currently it's between 55 and 85 that puts our line at 70 and i think it's going to hit that because i think it's advanced screenings have been selling out at a lot of different locations especially in new york and la and i think that word of mouth and that buzz is going to carry across the nation and i think it could hit I think it could hit over 70, so I'm going to go with like 75. I am going to say it's under. If the line is 70, I think this is going to underperform a little bit. And the reason I think that is just because I really feel like a lot of the buzz about this movie is entirely in online communities. And I think that we are kind of insular because we are in our community seeing this going, oh my god, it's a Greta Gerwig movie. It looks so fun. I don't really know how that's going to translate into the real world, especially especially because I think Barbie has a bit of a, a toxic brand awareness. I think that there's a lot of people that are just going to write this off immediately. Every time this movie trailer is played in theaters when I've been there, people have groaned in the audience. Maybe that's the crowds that I'm in, but it just, it doesn't seem like it's going to do well in rural spaces. It doesn't seem like it's going to do well outside of the key demographic of like 13 to 30 year olds. So I'm going to say under 70. I don't think it's going to be that far under 70. And the weird thing with Barbie is we don't really have a direct comparison to use. I know for some other movies like, oh, you could look to a previous installment of the franchise or you can look for a very similar type movie like Joyride we did with No Hard Feelings. Barbie, I don't think there's another movie like Barbie that we can be like, okay, compare it to this and that open to this, so it should do about this, adjust for inflation. So Barbie is a big question mark, and I feel like it could be this month's like big flash from last month where like we don't really know where to go. It's kind of just trusting your gut. Your gut tells you under, my gut tells me over. That brings us to Oppenheimer and the projections say 40 to 55, which puts our line at 47. This movie, though, we do have a direct comparison because Christopher Nolan has also done a war movie in the past, and that was Dunkirk back in 2017, which had an opening weekend of $50 million. However, Dunkirk was a more action-heavy war movie and also had a shorter runtime. Oppenheimer is pushing mm -hmm. three hours long, so $50 million is what Dunkirk did. Do you think Oppenheimer will go above or below that? Below. Far below. I think this is going to have very poor word of mouth. I think a lot of people are going to go in expecting it to be more action-packed than it is. It is not. It's going to really struggle to land outside of the core fan base of people who are going to see this as uh, as Nolan fans. Like you said, Dunkirk was like 90 minutes, 100 minutes long. It was very clear what it was. This is a three hour long dark biopic about the creation of the atom bomb. That does not sound to me like box office gold. This sounds like a very dark adult drama that is not going to necessarily connect with a wide audience. It might be a very good film, but I just don't see it 
making over 50 million dollars that sounds insane to me mission impossible is still going to be out in theaters at that time a lot of the audience who should be going to see oppenheimer will probably still be seeing mission impossible off of the tom cruise goodwill also i still maintain i think that there might be some controversy in the coming weeks especially when we first see the movie there might be some americans who kind of get up in arms about it the way that they did with first man so yeah i'm gonna say under how far under are you going like are you saying like under as in like the low end of projections at 40 or are you going even i'm lower gonna than say that? i'm gonna say even lower than that i'm gonna say 30 to 35 million is where i would land on this that's where projections were about a week or so ago when we didn't have the official ones from box office pro and we were using the quorum so who knows maybe it is that low or maybe it's higher i am gonna lean on a little bit of higher i think 50 sounds about right i just don't know if i want to go above or below 47 but because, you know, I tracked a little bit behind you for the last month, I need to gain points here and there. So I'm going to go over with Oppenheimer, even though I think it's going to be right at that 47 medium that we have set here. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Now, for the final week of the month, we don't have official projections for these, but we do know that Talk To Me is coming out, which is a, an independent Australian horror movie. Talk To Me is getting a wide release from A24, which kind of mirrors some of their other films like Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And I think you can talk a little bit more about this. Yeah, so last year, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies opened to $3.1 million in about 1.2K theaters. And then it's next week, it expanded into more theaters, but made a little bit of less money because, you know, A24, they kind of do a weird rollout for stuff. Another example would be the Mia Goff starring X, which opened to $4.3 million. Talk to Me has right now tracking from not the official set that we've been using of Box Office Pro, but another alternative site called The Quorum that says about 3 to $5 million, which falls into this range. To me... The word of mouth on this is strong, but I haven't seen a lot of promotion for it. So I'm going to lean slightly under if our line is $4 million. I'm also going to lean under. I mean, something Bodies, Bodies, Bodies had, and it only opened to 3.1. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies had some star power, which this doesn't. This is a tiny Australian independent film. Also, I can't really get a read of exactly what this film is. I'm sure it's going to be very good, but I think it's destined to be more of a cult classic than it is a, uh, a box office smash hit. The biggest thing that will come down for Talk To Me is when we get official theater count, because Buys, Buys, Buys probably would have opened to more money if it came out in more theaters. I would say a normal wide release is about 2,000 theaters, and that's what it had in its second week, but I, I know I saw it the first week, and I didn't come back to see it again the second week. And our final movie for the month of July, this is for the week of July 28th, is The Haunted Mansion. The quorum is projecting 32 to $37 million, so I would put our line at 35. And you know, that is a great number because a few years ago, Jungle Cruise actually opened to that exact same number. However, the caveat for that would be Jungle Cruise was day and date on Disney+. Plus. This movie's not, but Jungle Cruise did come out during the pandemic. So you can give or take some positives, some negatives comparing these two movies, but they're adaptations of Disney rides coming to the big screen. So Matt, let's say 34.5, $35 million. Are you going over or under? My brain is telling me to go over because, I mean, if Jungle Cruise could do 35 while also being in the middle of a pandemic while also being released on disney plus at the exact same time that tells me that haunted mansion should go over it but jungle cruise did have dwayne the rock johnson and he is a box office draw so i am gonna have to trust my gut here though and say it's going under just because for one thing i haven't seen any marketing for this movie i don't know where the marketing is i don't know who the audience for this film is jungle cruise is also a rollicking adventure movie and haunted mansion i don't know exactly what it's trying to be it doesn't make sense for this to make a ton of money the other weird thing going on here of haunted mansion is that it's coming out at the end of july this seems like it should come out in september like late september but yeah it's not and you can look to the OG, the original Haunted Mansion, that came out in November, Thanksgiving, so late November. So, like, Disney doesn't seem like they want to put this movie out in prime season. And the other one, I know that came out a long time ago, but it made about $24 million in its three-day weekend, 34 in its five-day weekend because it was a Thanksgiving release. So, like, those numbers aren't 
very good signs either. It shows that the audience for a Haunted Mansion movie may not be there. I think the trailers look kind of fun, but also I get the feeling like, is this supposed to be just a comedy? Is this supposed to be a little bit scary? It doesn't really read very well. There is stars in the movie. I know they're not to the level of The Rock, but I mean, you have Owen Wilson, you have Tiffany Haddish, Jamie Lee Curtis, Lakeith Stanfield. And I think that this movie could go two paths. I think it could completely bomb and makes like $20 million opening weekend and it has just toxic word of mouth. Or people see it and they're like, it's good. However, I don't think that's going to happen during its opening weekend. That's going to come in the weeks following that. So I'm going to go slightly yeah. under. If our line is 34 and a half, I think this hits 30. A large part of why The Haunted Mansion is going to underperform is just the title itself. Haunted Mansion makes it sound scary. And it's marketing to families, to kids. It's not something that it sounds like, especially if people don't see the Disney. It doesn't seem like something a lot of families are going to uh, take kids to, especially young kids. You can go back in the video to hear our recap of what each film coming out in wide release for the month of July will do. But like always, comment down below. Let us know what your predictions are. You don't have to do every movie. Just pick one, you know, and say, I think this movie's going over and here is why. I think this movie's going under, here is why. And keep a record because we'll come back next month. Maybe I'll do a little bit better. So far, the year of 2023 has not been good for me in terms of predicting box office after having a great 2022. Well, I'm definitely hoping, hoping that I'm wrong because I have everything underperforming this month except for one thing. And I want movies to do well in the box office, but I'm definitely not expecting that to happen. Hopefully, something really breaks out and surprises everyone just like Spider-Verse did last month. With all that being said, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fantasy Film Ball. But until next time, my name is Dill. And my name is Matt, and this is Fantasy Film Ball.